All right, so here we have a table analysis question. This is all of the text that's given to us and this is the table. We'll make sense of all of this together and then think about what the question is really asking. Okay, so coming back here, what do I have? There is this person, Philippe, who wants to organize a meeting. Now, this meeting will be attended by some people at the office and others will attend it remotely. So, via a teleconference. Now, he has some preferences on how he wants to schedule the meeting and we'll find those as we read further. First preference you see is here. He would prefer to schedule the meeting earlier in the week so I, earlier in the week it, it's not like i have a sure day but monday tuesday seems like earlier in the week thursday friday they feel like later in the week wednesday is in the middle but let's see if they give you more about that and if this is even needed then this is his preference but he needs to consider other factors as well so it's not really the day of the week which matters alone there are other things then it talks about the table. Okay, finally, they mentioned the table also. What does the table have? The table lists all of the available rooms, first of all, which means these that I see here, one through six, these are my available rooms. And it also lists all of the features that Philip needs to consider in choosing a room. Remember, we talked about one thing which was about when the meeting happens and then there were other factors. So they're saying this table actually lists all of these features that he needs to consider. So let's see those mentioned here. First, I see max occupancy, which means occupancy of the room or the maximum capacity of the room, how many people it can hold. That is one factor that he needs to consider. Second factor that he needs to consider is a project question mark, which means whether that room has a project or not. Third factor that he needs to consider is this, whether maybe video conferencing can be done there or not. And then the fourth preference here, the fourth factor is about availability of the room this week. So this is like the day when it is available. This will connect with, you know, his preference about having it earlier. Okay, let's read further. They'll explain more here. All of the available rooms, all of the available rooms are equipped for voice only teleconferencing. So every room has this capability, but okay, here's a but only some are equipped for video conferencing okay this is how i can understand this third factor i see there are yeses in some and no's in other that's why video conferencing is something that can have a no for some rooms that means some rooms do not have this capability but every single room has the voice only capability at least video is like an added feature that's why it's here in the table really because every single room has voice only features so that's not even mentioned in the table okay so based on this information that he has these features he has these criteria based on all of this philippe has come to a conclusion and what is that conclusion let's read this together his first preference is room one. So I'm going to rank this here. This is a rank one according to his preference. His second preference is room six. Third is room two. So this is preference number two. So rank two. And in fact, let me just use ranks in, a, in the Roman not uh, notation so that you're not confused. And room two is rank three for him. Okay. Then what else? He cannot use, okay, he cannot use rooms 4 and 5. So, these two are out. That means for some reason, either for the day or for other factors that are here, something or the other is wrong with these two rooms because of which I'm not taking them. So, we have understood everything that's given. We know how to read this also. Now, let's see what question, what the question is asking. We will then formulate an approach on what is it that we have to do. Then we'll come back to this data and pick up as and what we need. So, let's read this. It says, based on the information provided, you will select yes if the statement would. So, if the statements that you have here, if it would help explain at least one of his conclusions. So, essentially, these here that we read. This is what the conclusions were. No, conclusion is this is what I prefer. 
Essentially, what we really have to do is evaluate each statement along with the given information, everything that we got from the passage. When I combine that with each statement one by one, I want to see whether this combination is then enough to explain any of the conclusions, one or more of the conclusions. If it does help explain, I will mark yes. But if it does not help explain anything, then I will mark no. So you are looking at each statement along with the information. If you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. So, we'll read this one by one and make sense of this. So, if I read only the first statement, what do I have? Let's read this separately. So, it says, for this meeting, Philip is willing to schedule later in the week in order to have a room with video conferencing equipment. Understand this carefully. It's saying he is willing to sacrifice one condition that he had, one preference. What was the preference? To have it earlier in the week. Now we're saying he is willing to sacrifice this thing in order to, that means he's willing to sacrifice this for another thing. And what is that other thing? That is the video conferencing equipment. So the possibility of having video conferencing in that room. So, if I try to really, you know, compare these two, this statement is saying that video conferencing is more important for him than this earlier in the week thing. If this fact is true, that's what this, the question is saying, right? Think about this again. It said these statements, if true, do they help explain something? So, I am going to look at his his choice and all of the preferences again and then I'll see whether this helps justify some of his preferences. I'm going to see this in a way that I can sort the data and everything. Let's look at this in Excel. All right, here we are. So, I have listed the conclusion that he came to with the ranks that the different rooms got and that 4 and 5 were not there. Now, we are trying to evaluate this first statement here and we are seeing if this is a fact, if this really is how he judges, then does that really help explain any of the conclusions that he came to? If it would explain something, I would mark yes. If it would explain nothing, I would then mark no. Okay. So, let's see. We will start with this understanding that Philippe uh, values VC, the video conferencing part, more than the room being available sooner. So, First, if I look at all of the rooms that do have video conferencing, I will find these three rooms. It's one, five and six. While the other rooms two, three and four, they do not have video conferencing. Now, if I think only about the rooms that really are in his ranking, we know it's one, six and two in this order really. If you now see the video conferencing part about these, one has it, 6 has it, 2 does not have it. Similarly, if I compare all of these according to when they are available, which is the last column that I have here, you will notice that room number 2 is available on Wednesday, while 1 and 6, they are Thursday and Friday, which means room number 2 is available the earliest. So, that means availability-wise, the highest level of priority should go to room number 2. It's the top choice available. But still, he ended up ranking room number two at the end. Now, why would he have done that? Simply because he values VC more than a room being available sooner. Look, it is clearly stated here that room number two does not have video conferencing. We have a no here. That's why even if it did have the earliest availability here, I still did not choose it. Philip still put it last in his preference list at rank number three.
So this then really does explain his his ordering. It does explain why room number two came after one and six, despite it being available the soonest. And because it does explain something, I mark yes for this statement. So here also we come and we mark yes. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? Such is the power of the process of owning the data set. And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, in the table analysis modules in the GITA course, we teach you how to get comfortable with the table so that you can process it in the most efficient way. We serve more than 65 specially curated questions at the right progression so that you learn various aspects of the table analysis questions, including the process skills of inference, translate and visualize. Thus, throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. Now, let's look at statement number two. Okay, statement two says, for this meeting, Philippe is willing to use a room that does not have VC equipment. So, I want to see whether if this is indeed true, then does it help explain something? So we'll again go to the Excel and actually you will continue from where you were last. Just look here. We noticed that in his preference list, he has one, six and two. And among these, two really does not have video conferencing capabilities. What does that tell you then? It simply proves that he is willing to even take a room that does not have VC. Otherwise, why would this be in his preferences? And think about it. On the other hand, he has rejected rooms number four and five. Although, if you see here, 5 does have video conferencing and even then, 5 did not come in his list. So, something else was the problem with 5 and this clearly shows he is willing to go with a room that does not have VC compared to taking 5 which clearly has some other problem. So, this statement also then, the second one does explain his conclusion and so this will also be marked yes. We'll come here, mark yes. Finally, let's look at statement 3. Okay. This one says he's planning for at least 10 people to attend the meeting. Now we have to again see whether if this statement true helps explain any conclusion or not. So it will help explain conclusion if, you know, among the three preferences that he has, there really is a maximum occupancy of 10 or more in each of those rooms. That will explain something. Another thing that can explain this is that rooms 4 and 5 that he is sure he will not use, if we see that the maximum occupancy there is less than 10, then that will also explain why he rejected them. So, if we see anything like this in the data, then we will mark yes. Otherwise, this statement explains nothing. So, we're going to just see this here on the Excel and notice what we have. So again, 1, 6 and 2, these are the ones that he does prefer. Occupancy for each of these, yes, it is indeed greater than equal to 10. So it already explains why he prefers them. Now further on, C4 and 5 that he has definitely rejected, both of them are less than 10. So really, if this indeed is a preference he has greater than equal to 10, then that very nicely explains why 4 and 5 are eliminated why 1, 5 and 6, 1, 2 and 6 are still in the race. Of course, 3 is also supposed to be in the race if this was the only factor. But that's not what the question is saying. The question is not saying that these statements give you the only factor. They're saying at least something this should explain. So it is definitely explaining the rejection for 4 and 5. And therefore, we mark yes for this one as well. Overall then, all three of these statements could explain the conclusions that this guy made and so we have a yes in all of them. So overall, very interesting question. It was very, very important that you understand everything that's given 
and there was heavy translation even later on where you had to understand what these statements were giving they were giving you things that had to be taken true and then based on that true information we had to see if any of his conclusions could be explained when we very nicely went into these statements one by one we determined our approach each time for example here we wrote very clearly that it's you know the earlier and the video conferencing two preferences are clashing then we went and made sure that yes wherever there is vc that is a higher priority than time same we then looked at number 3 and number 4 again we decided a clear approach before jumping into the data and comfortably got an answer